Okay, so let's get a little practice adding these vectors. We have a airplane and um, it's uh, traveling at 100 meters per second in a given direction. The wind simultaneously is pushing it in a different direction. So in the last video, we saw how to add these vectors. So um, add these vectors and find the velocity of this airplane and then um, solve part B. Pause the video, work it to a solution, and when you're ready, start the video again. We'll work through it together. Okay, so I'm going to sketch a coordinate system for this. Uh, north, south, east, west. The uh, coordinates that were given in the problem. So, um, And I know that algebraically north, south, east, and west don't work very well, so I'm going to call the north direction positive, the south direction negative, east I will call positive, west I will call negative. That's for algebraic purposes. Um, so let's sketch these two vectors on here. Um, there's one vector, and I'll... Um, call this one vector one, it's 100 meters per second and it's 60 degrees above the north axis. Now, if I were doing this uh, graphically, I would need to uh, uh, establish a scale and actually measure the length of these vectors. I'm going to do this algebraic, so I'm simply sketching this freehand. So I'm going to call this vector vector one. It's 100 meters per second and it's 60 degrees uh, north of west. So from west, 60 degrees north of that. Uh, let's draw this up here. So uh, 100 meters per second, 60 degrees north of east. Um, and uh, I'm calling that one vector one. And vector two is uh, 20 meters per second, that is 20 degrees west of south. So only uh, 20 meters per second, and it's 20 degrees west of south. Um, so these are my two vectors. I'm calling this one vector two. So I need the components of each of these vectors. Um, I'm going to start with the uh, north-south component on vector 1, uh, simply to keep it out of the way from vector 2. So um, it has a north-south component that is to the north, and um, an, an east-west component that is to the west. So this will be the x component for vector 1 and the y component for vector 1. Uh, vector 2 has a y component that is in the negative southerly direction and an x component that is in the negative westerly direction. So here are the components of my vectors. Um, let's figure out what these are. Uh, and we will take x1 and y1, x2, and y2 and sum these components to find a total x and a total y. So um, x1, um, well uh, the triangle that I've drawn um, isn't using this 60 degrees and I, and I mentioned I did that just to keep it out of the way of the second vector. Um, so uh, if that's 60 degrees, then this one is 30. And that means that Y1 has a value of, well, if the hypotenuse is 100, then um, uh, co uh, cosine is uh, adjacent over hypotenuse, which means that Y1 has a value, and it is in the positive direction of uh, 100 cosine. 30 degrees, um, which gives me uh, about 86.6. And um, x1, um, that's 
in this negative direction here. Um, it's opposite of the 30 degrees, so opposite and hypotenuse, uh, that's a sine function. So um, x1 is 100 sine 30 degrees, and sine of 30 is a half, so this one is 50. Um, now, x1, that points in the negative direction, so that's negative 50. And y1 points in the positive direction, so that is uh, 86.6. For our x components, y2 is adjacent to the 20 degree angle. So if the hypotenuse is 20, then y2 adjacent and hypotenuse, that's a cosine function. Um, so this is uh, 20, the hypotenuse, times the cosine of 20 degrees. And that has a magnitude of uh, uh, about 18.8. Uh, now, look at y2. It does point in the negative direction. So that's negative 18.8. The x component, um, that's opposite our angle of 20 degrees. So hypotenuse and opposite is a sine function. 20 is the hypotenuse times the sine of 20 degrees gives us a magnitude of uh, about 6.884, somewhere around in there, 6.84. So uh, why did I go to the hundredth just now? I'm trying to be as confusing as possible, obviously. Um, so uh, uh, that x component does point in the negative direction. So that x2 is negative 6.84. And so to get an x total, the sum of these two is apparently negative 56.84. And the sum of the y components is uh, 67 or so, 67.8. Um, okay, so uh, I have the X and the Y components. Those are the components of the resultant I'm looking for. So if this is my north, south, east, west coordinate system, I have a Y component of 67.8 and an x component that is in the negative direction, 56.4. And my resultant is from the origin to the head of the second vector. So that resultant, which since these are velocity vectors we're adding, is the velocity or average velocity of this uh, object. Uh, that looks like uh, two sides of a right triangle. Gives me a, uh, it's about 88 and a half or so. 88.5 meters per second. Now, this is velocity, which is a vector. And since it's not on a primary axis, I can't just use positive or negative as its direction. I must give its direction in degrees from one of the primary axes. So if we measure this angle, uh, the adjacent side is 67.8, the opposite side is 56.4. So uh, that's a tangent function. I don't want the tangent of that angle. I want the angle in degrees. So the inverse tangent of opposite 56.4 over adjacent 67.8 gives me an angle of uh, about about 40 degrees and that angle was measured to the west from the northern direction so this is west of north um, so if my velocity is 88.5 meters per second the direction is at 40 degrees 
west of north. So here's my velocity. That answer is part A. Um, so now let's solve for part B. Uh, what will be the plane's displacement after one hour? Well, um, we know the average velocity is 88.5, has a magnitude of 88.5. So uh, if average velocity is displacement over time, now please note, guys, this uh, displacement, delta x, you know I'm not speaking about the change in any particular x component. I'm simply using delta x here to represent displacement as we learned in an earlier video. So if we know velocity and we know delta t, the time of one hour, then I think we can find delta x because uh, delta x then is just uh, uh, v average delta t. Uh, this equation at this point um, is no different than saying uh, the distance is speed times time. Uh, so in this case, delta x, the average velocity has a magnitude of 88.5 meters per second and a direction of 40 degrees west of north um, and uh, the time is uh, 3600 seconds so one hour guys that's 60 minutes at times 60 seconds 3600 seconds we can't use hours with meters per second second and hours that's not the same we need consistent units uh, so this is uh, 3600 and so uh, this looks like about uh, uh, 318,600 meters, um, which is uh, also known as 318.6 kilometers at, well, if the velocity was 40 degrees west of north, then so is the displacement at 40 degrees west of north. Here's the displacement. Okay, that is a uh, one quick little uh, practice problem. So here's another one that might not be quite as involved, but I'll let you be the judge of that. So in this problem, um, you're just going to go for a walk. So pause the video, read through the problem, set it up, and solve it. Okay, so to solve uh, this problem, let me draw a line here so we don't mix that up with the previous problem. So this is um, uh, 30 meters east, then 80 meters south, and finally 15 meters west. So if I uh, sketch this out on a coordinate system, my point of origin, hey, it's the origin, um, we're going to go 30 meters east. So East is over here, let's call that the positive direction. West over here, that's negative. North is up and positive. South is down and negative. So um, we're going to start at the origin and go 30 meters east. And then we're going to turn and go uh, 80 meters south. This is not drawn to scale. I'm just freehanding this for now. And then we will turn and go uh, uh, 15 meters west. And then we arrive at our destination. So here's our destination. And we want to know what was the displacement from the point of origin. Well, straight line distance from starting point to ending point is here. And if I'm not mistaken, we can probably turn this into a triangle. So I'm just going to extend my axis here to get it out of the way. So this is south and negative. Okay, so it looks like um, uh, 
uh, if that's my displacement vector, I have a uh, y component that is in the negative or southerly direction and an x component uh, that is in the positive easterly direction. Um, <clears throat> so uh, I know what the y one is. It's this one. So this is 80. And uh, it looks like the x component, we went 30 meters to the east and, um, excuse me, 15 meters to the west. Uh, and that looks like x is 15 meters. So we have a component that is um, uh, 80 meters in the uh, negative y direction or south. So we go 80 meters this way. And um, then 15 meters in the positive x direction. And our resultant is from the origin to the head of the second vector, that's the resultant, which is the displacement. Uh, and this is just a right triangle, right? So uh, uh, looks like 80 squared plus 15 squared, and take the root of that. Uh, this is about um, 81.4 or so. Uh, uh, meters, my units are in meters. Uh, and this is a, a vector, so we need a direction. Um, let's figure this angle. So we have opposite that angle is 15, adjacent to it is 80. That's going to be a tangent function. So the inverse tangent whoa the uh, wow okay anyhow the um, inverse tangent of uh, opposite which is 15 over adjacent which is 80 um, gives me uh, yeah, uh, about 10.6 degrees or so so my displacement is um, 81.4 meters at 10.6 degrees. Now, this is the southerly direction, and we measured ten, uh, calculate 10 degrees in the easterly direction from south. So that's east of south. And that takes care of the displacement. 81.4 meters at 10.6 degrees east of south. That answers part A. Uh, part B, if it took 1.5 minutes, what was your average velocity? Okay, 1.5 minutes. Guys, average velocity, um, uh, V average is... Uh, if I'm not mistaken, displacement over time. So again, this does just mean displacement, delta x, just the displacement. So um, uh, we know that our displacement is uh, 81.4 meters at 10.6 degrees east of south. So 81.4 meters at 10.6 degrees east of south. Uh, over the time, uh, 1.5 minutes. Minutes is not consistent with meters per second. We could do meters per minute, and uh, that wouldn't technically be wrong. It's just not uh, really a common unit of measurement for velocity, but meters per second is. So let's put this time in seconds. That's 90 seconds. So, uh, now this is about 0 0.9 uh, meters per second. And again, velocity is a vector, so we must include the direction 10.6 degrees east of south. And this takes care of the uh, average velocity. So there's the displacement, 
81.4 at 10.6 east of south and here's the velocity.